And now we bring you another relaxing moment of wine and audio. Not! Hey YouTube, it is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com. This time we have got a DB Technologies product that we are doing a take it apart review on. Um, this time it is the little brother, cousin, whatever you want to call it, of the IG4T that we just recently did a review on. This time we've got the DB Technologies IG2T. So this is just kind of a slimmed down version of the 4T, but it has um, dual 8-inch drivers in it um, and um, power amp horn, all that fun stuff like the 4T. We are going to get right into the specs on this thing and um, kind of show you what this thing does. We did a um, outdoor demo um, with this and I was amazed, absolutely amazed of what this dual 8 with a horn um, actually did. And we will post a video um, with a link um, with this video as well. So anyway, it's a two-way active speaker, built-in amplifier, frequency response. Let's do the minus 6 dB down is 63 to 19.2. It has a max SPL of 128 dB, so pretty up there. Um, the high frequency compression driver, it's got a 1.4 inch voice coil, so let's say an inch and a half with a one inch exit throat. It is um, titanium. Uh, the coverage is um, horizontal, is 100 degrees this way, 80 degrees this way, but it's on an asymmetrical horn. So it ends up tapering things off kind of down front, but throws quite a bit of the energy um, straight out. Um, it is a neodymium compression driver. Um, it has the two 8-inch low-frequency drivers with 2-inch um, voice coils on them, and they are also um, neodymium as well. So that's what keeps the weight on these things down, which is really kind of nice, even though injection mold it helps keep the weight down the neo drivers ends up helping um, to do that as well which allows this thing to weigh in at 28.22 pounds so i mean it is very light this thing will do what any 2 a 12 inch speaker will do hands down i mean just hands down no problem it'll do it and it does it really quite well the cool thing about the ig series the ingenious series is that you can take another one, flip it upside down, just like the IG4T, and the ports will couple on the thing, and now you've got basically another 3 dB of SPL um, that you can work with, and then it does have a little bit of the vertical steering in it, um, as we found with the IG4T, so you can up, down, up, down, whatever you want to do um, with that. The amplifier, it is the Digipro G3 um, that they have. It is a Class D. 400 watts RMS power in this little puppy. And my guess is it's probably 250 watts or so to the maybe 300 watts to the low frequency drivers and 100 watts to the high frequency. It does have the same OLED display and interface with a rotary encoder on it, just like the IG4T. Um, so it's got all the same features that the 4T has in the smaller 2T package. Um, the DSP on it is 56 bit. It's got a 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Um, a to D DDA converter. Um, it does have limiting, um, dual active peak RMS and thermal limiting um, on the uh, inputs in the amplifier. It does have a, a combo um, in XLR and quarter inch jack. It has a link out and then it's got a little mini USB for um, future updates. Um, it takes the same hardware though that the IG for anything in the Ingenious series. Um, IG1, 2, 3, and 4 all take the same hardware, the same interlinking hardware, the same hardware to stack it on a sub if you wanted to do that. It has the pole socket in the bottom, so if you want to put it on a pole on a speaker, um, you can do that as well. It's got the handles on the top and the bottom, but we'll get into that. Um, and then the, um, this thing's a little bit over two feet tall. Uh, about uh, 9 inches wide and about 13 inches deep. And again, like I said, it is uh, right around 28 pounds. So really light to work with. So with that said, a um, little manual comes with it. And then the other thing that is in the box is the TruCon cord. And um, for USA, we've got the standard Edison and then the uh, TruCon power on this thing. 
and um, has a TrueCon link out of it, so you can link into another speaker up on top of it, you know, as well. So, with that said, we are going to go ahead and get the thing out of the box again and um, start doing the take it apart. This is the DB Technologies Ingenia IG2T. Okay, so here it is in all of its glory. So this is 25.22 inches tall and um, nice little compact speaker. Um, it just looks like a mini IG4T. Different drivers in it. Looks like the same amplifier and everything as well. But um, on it, we'll turn that you can see the um, the linking holes that are here for that side attachment bracket so you can link two of them together. On the bottom is the pole socket and then they've got these handles on top and bottom here and again the grill on this guy is um, got the foam mesh behind it so you can't really see the drivers unless you got bright light like we do um, in the studio here shining through it and illuminating the inside of the thing. You can kind of see it down here. As we flip this puppy around we can see the amplifier module that they've got stuck in here and it looks just like the amplifier of the IG4T and um, power down here in and out fuse over here and then up top here you've got the uh, rotary encoder you've got the display and you've got ins and outs for the, um, the audio um, on it as well so on the top there is the infrared port that the other unit talks to which is in the back of the speaker there and so when two of these guys are linked together um, this does the communication between the two and transfers EQ information and volume settings and things like that um, up to the top box so they work in, um, in pairs or synchronous um, for these, um, these speakers. One of the nice things about them is that when you get these guys interlocked, and we'll just flip this down for a minute, um, you can see these cuts in it that they've um, molded into the top. And when you pop the other box up there, uh, to be able to do stacking, it just automatically kind of locks up there so that you're not sliding back and forth um, on the top so it just plops in. And the same thing with the IG4T. That's why I really like, love those speakers um, because they end up, when we're setting up, we can just lock that puppy in, put the little side locks on the thing, and it's fine. But if we don't have to until we get the side locks on, we don't have to really worry about that thing scooting away um, once it's sat up there um, on the top of the box. So, um, so that is the mechanics, so to speak, and construction of the, um, the IG2T. What we're going to do now is open up the grill and um, look at some of the drivers in it, pull out the high frequency driver, pull out the one of the eight inch drivers on this thing and um, take a peek. We'll um, pull out the amp. Uh, I'm sure, it, you know, it's going to look identical to the uh, to the IG4T. It's just less power um, in this amplifier module um, because they don't need quite 900 watts uh, on two 8-inch speakers. So um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get that pulled. And then once we get everything done, um, we're going to put it onto the um, the smart software and just do some basic analysis to see how it um, replicates the um, the pink noise um, on the thing and also then maybe just run some sweeps on it and see how low it goes and kind of what the um, specs are on that if we can kind of get it to replicate the 6 dB down to 63. My guess is that this thing's probably if we said 0 dB instead of 6 dB down I think we're probably going to end up about 80 or 85 um, as kind of a really good solid low end limit um, to these two 8-inch um, um, woofer speakers, low-frequency drivers in this cabinet. Um, coupled with a subwoofer like we did our demo, um, it was just awesome. I, I really was just 100 feet away. I was like, holy crap. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. DB Technologies Ingenia IG2T. Okay, so we got the screws out and grill is loose. And there we are, voila. So um, the grill, you know, same material as the uh, IG4T with the foam inside. They've done a really nice job. Um, I wish I could really do the kind of gluing that they do um, on these speaker grills with the um, foam. They just do a great job and they don't get any extra glue anywhere. Um, so we're looking at the, the dual eight inch drivers porting here. 
um, in the cabinet, and then we've got the asymmetrical horn up top, which if you kind of angle this, you can kind of see what they've done, is that this angle down here um, is much, much um, steeper um, than this one up at the top. So that's how they kind of keep the coverage on the thing in the vertical, kind of to a minimum as it goes out the top. It really gets some good spill um, with the coverage down front. Um, so that it ends up directing most of the energy here um, out the front. But as people are closer, they're not, if this thing is up on a pole, um, as people are closer, then as this ends up tapering off, then you're going to lose some of the energy of this high frequency driver um, as this comes down a little bit. If they had polar patterns on here, uh, you can kind of see what the, uh, the speaker would be doing and the driver would be doing as the angle gets a little bit steeper and steeper that it's going to end up dropping probably 3, 6, maybe 9, 12 dB down um, as it ends up being on the very edge of the, um, the asymmetrical taper. So 8 inch drivers here, um, standard cone suspension. Um, the front of this thing is um, all smooth and, and molded. And so what we're going to do now is get in and remove all these screws and pull this front assembly off and uh, pull open some drivers and take a look at those. Um, just kind of show you what these 8-inch drivers are and also the, um, the neodymium uh, high-frequency driver as well. The, um, the more that I use these and for different events and things, um, especially the IG-14s, um, more of these guys have become my favorite go-to uh, speakers that because of the, um, the weight of them and also just the sheer audio or sonic quality of them is just stinking amazing. Um, but also the versatility where you can, you know, place one of these on a you know, speaker pole um, and do a small corporate event or something, tie in a little mixer to it, or even directly a um, wireless mic if you have a little small you know, acoustic act or something and go into you know, a coffee house and be able to use these things. Um, like I said, corporate events would just be you know, amazing because they're just small and kind of hidden. Um, in fact, that whole series, the Ingenious series, is um, you know, really well suited to that. But even for live sound, as we are using our uh, Genia 4Ts for, um, they just kick butt with two of those things per side and a sub. It's just like, holy smokes. So um, just some side notes there as I digress. So we've got this thing apart and out. And we are free. Be free, little one. So um, we're going to go ahead and get these leads pulled and drop all the screws out of this thing and then turn and show you the inside of the cabinet. Okie doke. So we got all the leads off and took a couple of minutes because they're on really good. But as you can see now, let's go ahead and turn this puppy around. Um, this is our high frequency driver, our 8 inch driver with a neomagnet, 8 inch driver with a neomagnet. These are um, pressed. Um, speaker baskets are not cast, but um, the way that they have pressed these, and the same thing with the IG4T, is that um, it really offers some additional strengthening to the basket itself um, on these guys just by the way that they're inherently manufactured. And then um, connector strips on each of them, and then up on the high frequency driver. Um, as far as part numbers on them, they are AEB drivers. Um, So they are, I can't tell what they are as far as, looks like they're 8 ohm drivers on that one, and looks like possibly an 8 or a 4, I can't really tell, the writing's too tiny. But um, that is the uh, front assembly. On the internals of this guy, uh, we've got some dampening material in here. Um, that they've done uh, with this, um, I don't know, foam stuff or whatever. 
and then just leads that um, come out of it and go into the amplifier. One of the things that's notable though is if you look at this aluminum assembly, that is some additional stiffening that they've done um, to keep the resonance down in the cabinet and provide some um, mechanical stiffening as well as help um, take care of some of uh, the, um, the resonance uh, that is kind of inherent to plastic speakers, no matter whose they are. Um, they just kind of do that and um, that's why wood is the best, but not everything can be wood, um, just due to price point issues and things like that. But um, they've really done a good job that if you, you know, hate to be too loud, but you tap on the side of this thing and it really does not, even when the front assembly is on, it really doesn't sound like it's a hollow plastic box. So um, they've do, done a good job with that. And then it's secured on with one, two, three, four, five, six 12 screws um, so it really mates up well to the front of this box and um, provides it really a, a nice seal on it so good job DB Tech um, what we're going to do is set this aside right now and go ahead and um, pull the uh, high frequency driver off here and we'll pull one of the um, We'll pull this high frequency driver up and pull one of these um, 8 inch drivers off this and just kind of take a peek and see what it's all about. Okay, so we got the drivers out and you can see them here on the table. Um, standard paper cone and um, kind of a fabric suspension on this and standard, you know, plus minus leads going in. Um, but the thing just doesn't weigh much with the Neo Magnet on the thing and the way that they've got the, um, the basket configured uh, with the way that they've stamped that. If you can kind of take a look here, you can see what they've done to give it some extra rigidity um, by forming this so that it, it is structured and strength here. And then also with this dip down and then coming back up where the, uh, the magnet is affixed to the speaker. Um, really gives it some additional strengthening properties that a typical stamped basket like this that is formed um, doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't have, but that's just in my opinion. Um, high frequency driver. Um, neodymium, um, quite a bit of weight to this puppy. Um, it's on a metal adapter plate that that thing goes on and um, bolts onto the front of that with some stainless steel screws and then this thing bolts onto the assembly inside the, um, the front of the speaker there uh, for the horn assembly and um, comes out but it's um, got some cooling fins on the thing and um, you know pretty much basic driver and uh, not much to see does have a little um, mesh screen on the thing to keep crap out of it um, bugs and things like that so um, should anything get past this foam uh, on the speaker grill then they're not unless they are just super tiny um, not going to get through this guy at all um, one of the things that I just wanted to take a peek at that I don't recall seeing uh, crossover frequency is at uh, 1900 Hertz so it's up there quite a ways and that's why you've got a smaller driver but the reason they're doing that is because you've got smaller speakers um, that they can kind of push the envelope on that thing and let those 8-inch drivers um, handle that all the way up to that, um, that crossover point uh, on the, uh, the IG2T. So um, with that said, that is pretty much it. We'll show you what this thing looks like out the back side here. Um, let me get the screws out of it so we don't lose them. But, um, you know, you can just kind of see what the... Uh, the mounting of that is, and then if we flip this thing upside down, um, you can kind of see how the horn mounts up on that, and um, really pretty kind of just, you know, basic, and um, not much to it, but uh, the way this thing sounds, uh, what they've done with these two drivers on here and the horn, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead and get this button back up and then fire up the laptop uh, with the uh, Smart 8 on it and just kind of take a look at some response curves on the thing and see what it looks like versus the, um, the input um, of the, uh, the pink noise versus what the output is going to be picked up on our measurement mic. So we'll get her back together and take a look. If you uh, would like to see what the, um, the amplifier kind of is all about with these guys, um, we'll go ahead and put a link 
in the description uh, to the other video with the IG4T. And there we pull the amplifier out. Um, because it's all enclosed, there really is not much to see on it. They are all very efficient switch mode power supplies, um, multi-voltage. Um, they send you two fuses in the package so that you can end up doing it for uh, US uh, 120 volt AC. And then um, there's also a fuse in that it comes with uh, that is for um, European power 220 volt. And um, for those in the US, you need to change that fuse out um, that comes with it. So, we're going to go ahead and finish running the screws in this thing, and then we'll go ahead and do a, a little bit of frequency analysis on the DB Technologies IG2T. So we are all back together, got audio coming out of it, and what we're going to do now is get the, um, the smart setup and um, got the iPod, where is it, over on this side, playing, and... Um, just some stuff off of, um, unfortunately, it, YouTube, because if we play anything else, they will the audio. And um, it's unfortunate because a lot of the popular songs would be really nice to be able to do a, um, a test um, with this speaker so that uh, you can really kind of hear um, in something that you're used to rather than something that nobody's ever heard of before. So um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get some of the... Um, Big noise through it and uh, take a look and see what the trace looks like on this of the DB Technologies IG2T. Okay, so we've got everything. So we've got everything up and running. Um, as you can see, we've got the Smart 8 up and running, and um, we've got the measurement microphone here at about three feet away, um, kind of pointing at the speaker um, to pick up everything kind of on axis. So um, what we're going to go ahead and do. Yeah, you can see it here. Um, you can, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just um, turn it up and run some noise through it. Um, you can see the generator in the background. You can see my voice being picked up on the green trace. The generator is in the background on the, um, the pink trace. And what we're also gonna do is see if we can't um, calibrate the microphone here. Check one, two, check, check, check. We'll go ahead and get the microphone calibrated so we can see what the, uh, the DB readings are that we're getting this close together. And then kind of see how that, as we run the sweeps on it, we can kind of see where things taper off on the, um, on the low end. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, we are calibrated. I don't know if I've shown you this in the past, but this is our calibrator. Maybe it'll focus, maybe it won't. Let's do it here. So that's what we use, and it calibrates at two levels, 94 and I believe 110 dB. And so we are calibrated at 94, and um, works really well, fits over the tip uh, measurement mic right there, and sends out a, uh, a 94 and 110 dB signal. And um, you can hear it. Oops. So that's what we use to calibrate the measurement mic. So we've got everything going, and what we're going to do is just turn it up. So you can see we're generating, at this distance, about 85 dB. And you can see where the speaker with a measurement mic is um, kind of rolling off, so it seems like here that we are let's pull this down and see if we can't get there we go, crosshairs on it And so we are looking where that kind of rolls off. That's the generator. Let's go there. Pull this up a little bit.
turn the generator on in the background. And now you can see the spectrograph coming up. But if we take a look at it here, of where the low frequency really is in spectrograph, and this is just flat, there's nothing going on. Um, you can see that we roll off um, a little bit above 63, so we're at about 70, and really kind of, I'll turn this up. So as I did, you can kind of really see where the energy of that is, kind of like we predicted, that um, it's around 80 when you end up getting some volume up at uh, maybe down to 75. Um, where the um, the two little speakers um, kind of taper off a little bit. So let's go ahead and run some sweeps through it. Let's see if we can bring up the... Um Let's go up here into our signal generator. And it's generating 110 right now. Let's bring that level up. We'll pull this up a little bit. So you can see where it's at. We really got quite a bit of sound. I'm going to have to close this down to be able to get back into here to pull this thing down a little bit. So now we're going down. We're in 90. So let's go back to that 110. So we've got 87 we're generating, almost 88. So now we're at the, the same levels and we're just gonna start going down. So we're down to 100. So you see as we get down, it really starts dropping off. But that's, you know, asking an 8 inch driver really to do a lot in the low frequency area that it's just really kind of not designed to do. But as we get up into coming up now and uh, 110 and on up So let's bring this spectrograph up and you can see now where the low frequency energy is here. It really doesn't have a problem generating all the way to 20k though. So
can see, you know, generators producing full spectrum, fairly flat. Speakers fairly flat within a few dB all the way across the band, but as we had said, the um, really the lower limits of that thing that I would really give it, and that's why the thing does sound so good with a, um, a subwoofer that um, the thing really just performs quite well when it's coupled to a um, to a single 18 or a double 18 sub, and then we'll show you that in this um, this other video. So. Um, so that is the DB Technologies IG2T, and um, as we can kind of see from the um, the spectrograph, and I hope it wasn't too um, messed up with reflections and stuff on it, glare. But um, you can kind of see what this little guy does. Um, it is very efficient. It sounds really good. Um, it is fairly flat. Um, like I said, great for corporate events. Great for you know, small bands, and with two of these things, a small band could really do quite a nice little gig with two of these per side, um, or one-on-one -on -one left and right, um, over a, a DB Technology sub-15H or a sub-18H, marvelous, wonderful little rig that this thing would be um, with a low frequency energy that one of those subs um, would do. I think a 15H would couple really nice to this. The 15H is lighter, easier to transport, that if you're looking for something that is, um, you know, fairly compact and you can move around, put wheels on the thing and you're off and running um, for, the, uh, for the sub. And the sub's got the link output, crossover output that you'll just send everything from 90 or 100 or whatever. Um, up to the top box and really keep this guy doing what it needs to do and stay out of the um, the low frequency energy and uh, let the sub do what it needs to do. But um, that is my take. Um, I am very impressed with the um, the IG2T uh, as I was with the IG4T. So um, with that said, if you have any questions, go ahead and um, shoot us a message, comment. Um, here in the video, you can get a hold of us at info at trinityprosound.com. You can also reach out to us and call us directly. We'd love to talk to you. Area code 209-832-8023. Even if you're international, shoot us some you know, questions on this thing here on the YouTube. Um, comment if you have anything and want to know any more information on this thing. Even though you're not in the U.S., doesn't make any difference. Reach out to us. We'd be love to be able to respond to you and um, get you into something um, that is going to do wonders for you and, and just last a long time and sound fantastic. So um, with that said, um, DB Technologies IG2T. Again, this is Trinity Productions, TrinityProSound.com. Thanks for watching.